Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 40 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about that 83% of hiring managers say open source is a high priority today, which is up 76% in 2017. Linux is the most in-demand open source skill category, considered a must-have for nearly all entry-level open source careers. Demand for open source developers with container expertise is soaring, with 57% of hiring managers prioritizing this expertise in 2018, which is up 27% from last year. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips regarding training open source tips. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. This is a great topic. I know because I picked it. <laughs> yes, Dave, you picked this topic and it's a really good one. So look, a great opening question for you should be, uh, where does one get open source training from these days? Yeah, that is a good question because you got to remember that we thought that open source was going to be displaced by cloud computing five years ago. And I kind of cracked up when I heard that because if you look at the cloud providers, even Microsoft, they have Linux, they have um, MySQL, they have you know all the traditional stuff that we've been dealing with for years. And they have to because a lot of platforms were, a lot of applications were built on those platforms and they're moving to an open source platform. It just happens to be running in the cloud. So or really kind of the cloud has really taken open source to the next level um, because it is on demand. We're not having to pay for hardware and software. It's in essence cheaper than dealing with open source on our own hardware our platforms and the same sort of discounts apply, including free, and how we're leveraging open source systems. But the training really needs to be had by uh, the normal suspects and people who are dealing with the open source providers. And so you have Red Hat, you have Lin the Linux Foundation, and they have a lot of uh, you know folks who are very strong in providing you know good great training courses and things like that. Linux.com. Uh, Cloud Guru, you know, Simply Learn, those sorts of on-demand providers are good places to look as well. But the reality is, if you cruise around YouTube, you can learn a hell of a lot about Linux uh, from some people that are probably smarter than a lot of the instructors and the pay-for platforms out there. Because um, the people who, you know, put out these publicly uh, supported platforms, these open-source platforms, love them some free stuff. And they're willing to provide training and guidance and things like that for free. And I think that's got to drive some of the traditional enterprise software folks nuts. But the reality is that I can do more with open source technology these days than I could five years ago and a lot more than I could 10 years ago, You know, including working with a lot of clients who demand the fact that we're just going to use open source technology. We're not going to consider any commercial uh, software that we can leverage within our stack. And while that sounds a bit scary, it's never stopped me from being successful in building these systems, whether it's integration, you know, whether it's a database, whether it's, you know, metadata management, whether it's, you know, data abstraction, uh, operational th sorts of things. You're limiting yourself with the open source stuff and not necessarily going to commercial packages, but you're not limiting the capabilities of your ability to be successful. And by the way, you're not limiting your ability to leverage cloud computing. Uh, if it doesn't run there, you can move those things to the platform and make it run there. So it's something that's going to be, you know, part of the infrastructure of cloud, of, uh, of software going forward for a long period of time, whether, you know, cloud computing uh, has an impact or not, uh, you know, going forward. And I think people are going to basically get the, the training at a very cheap discounted rate from lots of people are in essence giving it away, which is, um, you know, kind of the power of the people, the crowdfunding, you know, crowdsourcing, you know, crowdsourcing thing that, you know, is going on in the industry, which is something that kind of arose out of nowhere, which I think is, you know, a powerful kind of uh, movement in the software business. So, you know, great for the open source people. They're giving away the training, they're giving away the expertise, and they're giving away the software. And I think that's going to benefit everybody. Yeah, it truly will. In fact, it's, it's open source at its best, really, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> everything open source as open source as a service. 
someone should, uh, if someone hasn't got that URL, then I'm sure they will after this program. Um, I mean, there was a, an interesting, some interesting statistics that Dice.com put together actually with regards to this. And you know, the number of hiring managers seeking Linux talent, you know, has soared in 2018, which is I think it was uh, 80%, which is up 65% from that in in uh, 2017 which is making it the, the most in-demand open source skill. So, I mean, Linux is really up there with what's going on at the moment. And uh, I think it's just uh, just peaked above cloud computing, actually. So it's a very interesting thing. Where do you see Linux sort of plattering out then, Dave? I don't think it will plateau out. I mean, and cloud computing is, in essence, selling more Linux um, you know, going forward than anything else, as well as the other open source platforms going forward. So it's... In essence, I'm not having to download my own distribution and install it on my own PC or my own cores in the data center and configure it myself. I mean, I did that, uh, you know, for a living for a bit, uh, and it's 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 actually a tough thing to do. I can go ahead and use the instances and start lining up things in the cloud. And so, the cloud is, in essence, a force multiplier for the open source stuff. That's what's going on today, probably more so than the commercial based system because it's cheaper. They're able to sell it. Cheaper as a service because it's cheaper for them to to buy it and maintain it than it is a commercial off the shelf package where you have to actually pay the software providers for their IP. Um, but the open source, there is no IP payments because it's community driven, you know, kind of building of these various things. So it's going to be, you know, Linux in huge demand. Both the AWS limit Linux, uh, Red Hat Linux, or you know, traditional, you know, Linux that's uh, that's uh, uh, traditional distributions, things like that and other flavors of the various things. IoT-based open source systems, database open source systems, really kind of the sky's the limit. There's no reason, you know, it's kind of funny, 10 years ago you couldn't run an enterprise on completely open source, but right now, you know, I have several clients that are in essence running everything on open source. Um, you know, smaller software companies, smaller, you know, businesses, you know, to, to say, but the reality is that they made a priority around just kind of building a community around leveraging open source things. And while that's a, harder thing to do in terms of getting the talent and technology to make it happen, uh, you're typically going to deal with something that's much more effective and efficient and cheaper, you know, going forward, as long as you can kind of fill in the gaps that you have to do. You have to have smart people there to actually round out utilization of open source because you're not going to get a lot of support. Yeah, that's exactly right. There are risks, obviously, around all of that. But, I mean, it moves us on nicely to uh, your top three open source training tips, Dave. So if you'd like to share those, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, number one, pick your open source journey. Uh, you can't do everything. So if you're thinking about, I'm just doing open source, and I've, I've you know, gone to a few industry parties where people have told me that, and I'm like, well, what do you mean that? You know, what's databases, operating systems, you know, development tools, IDEs, you know, DevOps? You have to really, in essence, pick a path through that going forward. You can't do everything. So, you know, please don't say you're an open source expert because you're not. You're, you need to be an open source expert. In the database tools, in the uh, in in the operating system tools, and the management tools, and I think even picking you know a path in terms of how open source works and plays with public cloud providers is probably not a bad way to go. So focus on hands-on training, meaning that you can look at leveraging cloud computing providers to provide you with an open source environment. You're able to try and leverage along with your training, and so you know as you get your video training or as you get your classroom training or however you you, you choose to be trained. You know, make sure you're using open source tools in the cloud because they're typically free or close to free and kind of assessing your skills and allowing you to build things and deploy things. There's nothing like hands on training to kind of round out your skill set and then, you know, round out with DevOps skills going forward. You know, I, I always say we talk about skills to pay the bills and that DevOps is uh, um, beyond hot right now in terms of red hot, uh, you know, capabilities and people who are DevOps engineers who specialize in the open source tools are gonna be you know, flying off the shelf, so to speak. Uh, so go ahead and get those skills now and make sure whether, whether or not you're moving to databases or operating systems or, or um, integration tools or whatever, that DevOps is gonna be on top of your list understanding how the open source stuff works and plays well in that environment because it'll get you a big paying job. Great top three tips there, Dave. Thanks so much for sharing those, very insightful. You're welcome. And thanks for being part of the training show as always. It's always a pleasure. It's always great to be here, man.
Excellent. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show about open source and some top tips there from Dave. And there will be some links below in the description box as well. And uh, yeah, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. David's also on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. There's some graphics on the screen and all the links are, are below in the description box as well. And we're also on Instagram, so come and join us on Instagram. If this is the first show you've seen uh, that we've ever done, then that's great because there's lots more for you to watch as well so hopefully you'll enjoy watching those again thanks for watching and until next week